welcome to another episode of Women Empowerment Series video podcast today with me, Farisha. And I'm really honored and delighted to have a very special guest with me. It's Chip Puan Sarima Ibrahim. Hi! Hi, Farisha. Hi, everyone. Thank you for playing the video for Harapan tadi. Oh, so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I can't believe it. I tak percaya. I am interviewing you for Women Empowerment Series because I have been following your work. I've been following you on social media and I really admire your work. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Um, If it wasn't for people supporting me, then it doesn't mean anything. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, and just to share with you with Women Empowerment Series video podcast is my personal project and this is to empower okay women in Malaysia to step outside of their comfort zone and reach their fullest potential. Oh, yeah. Okay, excellent. I'm glad I'm, I'm in here now. Let's do it. Okay. What, what, what are we going to talk about today? Okay, so we're going to talk about first question. It's okay to not be okay. So as the mental health advocate and patron of mental illness awareness and support association, Miasa, can you share with us more on Miasa mission and vision and also your personal experience dealing with your struggles with postpartum depression? Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm the patron and I, I basically work to help promote what Miasa does. So Miasa is um, a peer-supported and peer-founded association, an NGO, uh, that provides uh, mental health uh, services, awareness, mental health screenings, employment assistance, um, circle support groups, and free counseling, etc. to the below 40s and many, many more. So you can, can check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and basically what I do there is I, I help to promote and be part of the discussions. And one of the bigger discussions that Miasa is doing is trying to change certain policies, like to get rid of um, mental institutions and also to decriminalize suicide and, and various other things, um, basically giving back to society and it's peer led. So that means that people with lived experiences who've had depression, anxiety and mental illnesses or mental health problems are the ones running it. Can you share a bit on your personal experience? How do you deal with it? How do you overcome right. it? Right. Okay. So basically, I became, I was actually working with Miasa prior to this, like supporting them and stuff, because I'm very passionate about psychology. I studied psychology and I've continued to, to learn a lot about it. But in, in 2019, Farisha, I had a um, pretty bad postnatal depression after I gave birth. And um, Miasa was one of the associations and, and the, 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 the founder of Miasa also supported me through the journey and, and encouraged me. Um, to seek out help and because of that we we formed a closer relationship and of course with um, professional intervention and I got help and I had support of my husband and family and friends I managed to come out of it uh, it took about six months and a lot of therapy and medication and alhamdulillah I came out um, probably stronger and wiser than I was when I went into it because I didn't know a lot of issues that I had before I got the postnatal um, depression, because it hit me suddenly uh, after uh, three days after giving birth, it hit me first. And then I didn't realize, I just thought maybe much of blood pressure problems when I came back from the hospital. But then when I got home, I started to have panic attacks and all these things. So, you know, there's a lot of stigma around postnatal depression. People don't believe in it. People think it's just Maroyan and all the, the, the old school you know, negative connotations attached to it. So I, because I have an education in psychology, luckily I knew what to do to seek out help what, and whatnot. But for a lot of people, they don't. And unfortunately, there's an awful lot of tragic endings for people who go through it. But for me, Alhamdulillah, with a lot of work and a lot of uh, treatment, I came up, thankfully. Alhamdulillah. And I personally think... You know, support system is really important, yeah? The support system. Yeah, because yeah. it's a serious issue. Yeah. And then yeah, some and if you don't share it, if you keep it inside, that's when you can get it out on your child, your child, your children, or your spouse. And sometimes get it out on yourself. So There's been a lot of cases, you know, and, and as a mental health advocate, I work closely with Miasa and also with AWAS, uh, Awareness Against Suicide. And I can see a lot of the statistics um, that they show me and, and, and let me know about, um, you know, people do things they regret and 
if only we could help people to get help before they make a decision that can you know change their lives and others too okay and moving on to the next question what are you currently working on well right now i've just released a song harapan which you guys have all seen and this is a song that uh, myself and damian put together to give hope and to demonstrate in the video what people go through actually you know the loneliness especially during you know the last two years being at home and a lot of the times people put a smiley face when they go online but they're going through something behind the scenes everybody is um but they don't show it and a lot of times we just need a support system like you just said friends or somebody to ask are you really okay do you want to talk about it um and of course some some other people need more than that they need a professional uh assistance to follow up but this video and this song is about giving harapan hope to people that you know you can get through it and also to educate people on the importance of being there for each other so i've been busy doing that i'm also involved in a special education uh needs school well it's not a school it's more like an academy it's called head start and i'm the ambassador for that and we're opening another branch and we hope to help the children and the parents of children who have autism adhd and what not so i'm pretty busy doing this farisha my i used to just entertain gun like for 25 years it was hosting singing acting but now that i have a daughter i feel like it's my responsibility as her mom to do more than just to entertain but to have a message you know so i just want to make sure that in malaysia we live in a country where people are healthy not just physically but mentally and that children who have any special needs can get help because their parents can then have healthier mental states so this is my focus and i'm working with more clients and everything is to do with mental health actually Okay so you are passionate in special needs education can you tell yeah. us on your special needs education center and also coaching certification Okay so Head Start um Head Start is actually it's got a branch in Shah Alam and so we're branching out to several more so it provides a place it's got we've got therapists occupational therapists speech therapists there's also going to be um psychological and emotional support for the parents um in the new center that's going to be opening in Damansara and um i mean please go check it out because i can't explain the whole thing there's so much that head start provides but it's like a one stop place where you can even have daycare for your children and it's just a place where you can feel safe and trust that your your child is getting cared for according to their special needs and um for everything else that i'm doing like right now i'm in the middle of coaching training So I've got 3 more months to go Tida but I am going to come out hopefully being a transformative coach which means I can coach people um on top of my psych uh, qualification I want to be able to coach people so kononya branga nak jadi Tony Robbins lah ni but hey I must try and start somewhere again inshallah inshallah and I think that you'll be a terrific coach I hope so I mean <laughs> In. Okay. And what is the challenging moment in your career and how do you overcome it? How do you get back up? Wow. There's been so many. Like I don't even know where to start. Like um challenges. So many challenges. Um physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, the whole shebang. So what do? Uh but challenges I see them as that. Is I'm glad you said challenges, Farish, and not like problems or difficulties because everything is a challenge and life is full of challenges and then you stagnant good job and then you have achievements and then you have challenges and you come back up so you know i started from very humble beginnings like when i started in the entertainment industry i was 19 i was working three jobs in a restaurant and two other jobs part time and i was studying psychology in 1997 1996 1997 and then i got an audition to go for a commercial and then i got another audition to go and clap in an audience for 50 ringgit to clap for 4 hours and i took it because to me 50 ringgit is a lot a lot of money especially back then and um from there some talent scouts saw me and then i got more auditions and auditions and it became bigger and bigger and bigger so they were accidentally jetty famous <laughs> um 
but I had to go on buses, go into town, go to shoots and and find my way um, independently because my parents were not here. It was just me alone at Malaysia at that time. And so a lot of the challenges were fighting through cliche. A lot of roles were offered to me that memang tak sesuai, but I thought, let me try break the stigma. Let me go and do these kind of un- unusual, funny roles, you know, and and hosting, you know, I try to host with my style and not host according to what other people wanted me to do. And that caused a lot of people to be upset. And at the end of the day, they were happy. But a lot of arguments and a lot of issues, but like anything in life, you know, a difficult point. And then once you break through it and you see the light, can. Yeah. and then physically, mentally, very challenging. I used to go to shoot sometimes 2 a.m. Balik ko 11 a.m. Tido, siang, so... Work life jadi upside down lah for many years because shooting lewat, recording lagu pun lewat. So people don't know these things behind the scenes, kan? Um, so that's how it was. But I needed to do it. I needed to try rezeki and it taught me a lot of things in life. And um, and then trying to balance out my passion, which is um, mental health. So I continued studying while working. Earn a living and keep my education going. That was a big challenge. Sometimes about book biology on set, then I have a script, half a for examination the next day. So there's been quite a lot of challenges. Yeah. And I think all of us, yeah, as a human being, we all go through different types of challenges. You know, yeah, all yeah. of us, yeah, everyone has been tested with different challenges. Semua orang diuji. All of us go Semua through orang diuji different challenges in life. So I guess we need to be kind to each other. We need to yeah. respect each other. And we also need to, I love this quote, be kind because everyone is fighting a battle that we don't know about. Everybody. Exactly. So for exactly. us, you know, go through the challenges in life and then also yeah. get back up. Don't be afraid to step up and get back up, bounce back. Because most people... Yeah afraid to bounce back but we need to be brave you know after we go through all those challenges we need to be brave to bounce back and get up yeah and we need to be brave enough to admit that we're struggling itu masalah yang selalunya kita hadapi lah orang tak nak minta tolong sebab malu like afraid of being judged or looked down upon macam mm-hmm. kau ni lemah lah kan kenapa tak boleh ni just get over it and things like that so Oftentimes, we, I, I've learned as a mental health advocate, you know, the words to say and not to say to somebody when they're going through that pre- process of wanting to bounce back. Ada banyak de- definitive moments tau yang akan define sama ada dia boleh ke tak bounce back. So, support daripada family, kawan-kawan, jenis support yang kita bagi, uh, the things we say to them, you know, do we put them down? Do we belittle their feelings in the process or do we empower them? Then jangan pula ada apa toxic positivity like everything will be fine. Nah, itu memang bohong. So there's no point in saying things like that. So there's a lot of ways that we can help. And sometimes it's just being silent and saying, "Hey, I'm here for you. If you need me, tell me. You know what I can do for you." Um, but most importantly, is us. How yeah. do we ask for support? Kita ni tak pandai minta tolong lah. As a society, we don't know how to say, "Um, you know what? I need help." It seems to be a struggle. And if we don't ask for help, no one can mind read, kan? So as women, we need to be able to stop this, apa ni macam, need to look strong, like I'm superwoman, I can do everything. Like, yes, we can. Anybody can do everything, but at what cost is the question. Does it cost you your mental, emotional, or physical health? And then you need to step back and see and prioritize. Yes, I agree with you. And everyone have their own flaws, yeah? Yeah, so behind all the strong women, uh, you know, we <laughs> have our strength, we all have our weaknesses. So it's Behind a- all the strong women is a, uh, is a lot of sweat and tears and blood, actually, uh, that's gone into that appearance of being so-called strong. But the strongest people, Farisha, from what I've seen and I believe, are those who reach out and say, you know, there's something not okay right now and I need to get help for me. And that is the strongest. About it. Yeah. Yes. Let it out. Yeah, most important yeah. to just let it out. Share with someone. Yeah. 
Yeah, instead. Yeah, but it's got to be someone that you can trust or somebody that you know is not going to exploit your pain, kan? Tu juga cabaran, that's also a challenge. Yeah. I remember when my father passed away in 2016, uh dia meninggal a uh, heart attack. Uh, I was in a depression um after my dad passed away. Um tak nak cakap dengan orang, um tak nak makan, tak nak minum. I didn't go to work. So down. And I cried every day. I cried because I'm so close to him. I'm so close. Really? To him. So oh. after he passed away, I was in my lowest spirit in my life. And the past I saw that, I do ah, I pray to Allah. I check up. Ya Allah, ya Tuhan ku. I know that Papa is in a better place right now. Yes. But yes. then you know to to bounce back to bounce back and to yeah. you know bounce back to work to talk to people yeah. to nice um alhamdulillah i was blessed with good friends as well to share alhamdulillah to share what i've been going through and you know alhamdulillah yeah. don't come they understand it's not easy especially no. when you lost a loved one especially it's your dad oh my goodness so i've been through it so yeah me it's been 5 years hard. five years arwahaba meninggal and i'm still recovering slowly yes but that's that's great that you can cry about it i see crying about it it means that you are recovering yeah it's a process because when is your dad and he sacrifice a lot for you and your brother you can kind of like think that You know, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today without his guidance, without right. me the education and and his love and care. Everything. Yes. Oh. So, You're so fortunate that you had a lovely, wonderful dad. So even that's so lovely. I'm still in the healing phase. So for me, mm. when I talk about it, I. Talk to my friends, my family members, dari mana semua, auntie, uncle, they also understand, and it's okay for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because it's grief; it's a process, and yeah, we- grief doesn't go in like one, two, three years. You cannot. You can be grieving forever, sepanya. And don't be shy to talk about it. It's okay to not be okay. So even for yeah. you know. Uh, macam you cakap tadi, you know, women, okay, we can do wonders, we can multitask, we can do many things, but behind the facade, behind the multi oh. facade, there's also struggle that people don't know about. Of course. And there's also yes. losses and uh, losses and grief that we go through. Yes. So part yes. and parcel of life. Eh? It I, is, and part and parcel of our recipe of what makes us us. Yeah. You know, kita ada ingredients tau. Macam, what makes Farisha? What makes me? What makes everyone? And dia punya ingredients is not just money saja. Ada dia punya masam, ada dia punya garam, kan? Yes. So, dari situ dia sedap. Yeah, and uh, it's it you know? character. And because of the pain and the struggle that you go through, it shapes your character. So, you become a better person. Yes. So, you become yeah. more humble, humility, and most importantly, you have empathy. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, exactly. Because kalau tak, mm, empathy is so important. You're right. Because and only people who've been through a lot of pain can truly offer empathy. Because kalau tak, cuma nak cakap, you know, I know what you feel, or or be present in 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 a person's space when someone is grieving, like you are still. Yeah. Um. I I lost a loved one. Like we all have, kind of like yeah. maybe twenty twenty years ago, my cousin, and until today, if if I don't see his photo, I'm okay. Same age as me, but yeah. if I see his photo, yeah. Yeah. I cannot. Still, I cannot because I feel like it was too short, his life. So yeah. And and it's it's very hard because you feel the loneliness and the space, the emptiness, and a lot of what ifs. What if he was here still? What if that can? But you know, the gift that that their passing leaves us is like you said, empathy, and okay. and we can be there for other people who are going through it. Because if we don't go through it, how are we gonna 
understand be there for others oh you know so this is this is why it's important for for us as a society to to understand that grief is a healthy process and it's kita ni banyak macam kalau dia orang meninggal kita terus macam we give them the amount of days but then after that macam ah dah cukup dah ah lepas ni jangan jangan sedih dah tak payah nak sedih dah it's like kita kena redha sahaja lepas tu accept and move on cuma different people have a a length of time that it takes for everyone it's it's different you the acceptance period is different to heal the healing process yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not the same if i cut my arm or you cut your arm i'm not going to be like okay farisha i'm now in the healing stage 3 are you the same ah uh, tak boleh so we all are like everyone is different on our own pace yeah, yeah. and we need to be more compassionate towards each other and like now that is something that i'm worried about because like for example like this this pandemic there's two pandemics happening where there's a grief pandemic of death losses uh death to the normal life death of people death of jobs death of finances and then there's also the actual economical problems at the same time so we have the covid and we have the grief the problem is kita fixing the covid is just going there's no vaccine for grief there's no there's no vaccine for losing a loved one there's no vaccine there's only the process and the process may take a long time so what i always am worried about now when people ask me sorry my you know what what do you want to do i i wish the government would do more in terms of taking care of the the second pandemic which is the parallel pandemic the the pain because people have lost children have lost parents due to covid imagine both parents gone you know even when we get back to normal life kita keluar pergi jalan-jalan nak pergi langkawi nak pergi wherever in the world but where are these two where are these two children that that have lost their parents for example going to go they don't care kalau buka ke tak buka travel restriction and these are the people that need help as well not just money the pain so i'm doing my bit and you're doing your bit we're trying to just yeah emotionally you know, be there for people yeah. yeah so that that is where my focus is now in in doing things like this and talking like this so that we can share it and just say at least we 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 acknowledge that people are going through something because a lot of times people go through something they feel alone like oh, this pain is only my pain but actually a lot of people are going through pain you know um some people will look at me and be like what pain are you going through zaima and i'm like well i got my own pain too you know we all do we all do because we, we don't talk about it in front of the screen doesn't mean that we're not going through something by ourselves behind the scenes kan mm-hmm. um but it doesn't make us weak you know we can use that pain in a in a positive way like like you are now you know you have this show and you're you're trying to empower people while you're going through your healing process so that is helping you also okay sebenarnya i mean you're talking to me today and i'm talking to you and this wouldn't have happened if you didn't do this so maybe if you didn't go through that grief you wouldn't be doing this so it's brought you some sort of gift as well yeah. and hikmah again and life purpose as well because life is too short mm. so life is too short so what i want to do is i want to make my yes. arwah papa so proud of me yeah and i want to carry on his legacy i'm sure he's proud of you are you what hello <laughs> Hey, you're talking to me, okay? Is that not something to be proud of? So, yeah. you know, I don't know if he ever knew me when I was on TV, but I'm sure maybe if he did, he'd be like, "Oh my god." So, yeah. There's a lot of things you're doing that are beneficial to people, so inshallah. You. you know, like with our talk here, I hope people will you know, be thanks to you, you know, you're doing this and then you allow me to give me your platform so that I can spread awareness and and talk about this subject of grief and So it's thanks to you. If not, I won't be talking about this today. Yeah, and it's okay to grieve. It's okay to cry, because yes. we're all human, and it's okay to have empathy yeah. and compassion 
the most important of course it is empathy empathy compassion care and it's okay to yes. cry that's mm-hmm. how I feel and towards yourself especially towards yourself um sometimes we don't have empathy for ourselves we're like come on you can be strong you can get past it so like for me now with my daughter Sophia I try to teach her um how to connect with her feelings so kalau dia marah ke dia baling barang I try not to be like eh jangan baling lah I try to give her so sort of like what is it that you're feeling because we like that in our educational system yes. we're all about half file past exams and Rising. but we we don't have enough like yeah it's all like cognitive it's not about feeling so that's something that you know I w- I would love for Malaysians to be able to communicate their feelings rather than like go online kalau tak puas hati write it online but that was hati cyber bully and kita ni suka membawang kan as a culture yeah that's not healthy cyber bullying any form of bullying is not healthy it's not right yeah membawang is not healthy you know what i mean it's like passive aggression you know for us the society aggression is like a physical thing only but emotional aggression putting people down belittling people you know using kata-kata kasar or pekecilkan yeah. orang you know it's it's also a form of aggression so we need to be aware of that as a society so i i i have worked with cybersecurity in malaysia i've done things with women's entrepreneur networks we now and many many um associations where you know women are are trying to to learn the coping skills to stand up for themselves um and then kalau kita stand up for ourselves as women or like feminist kau ni feminist sangat lah apa ni you know tak respect laki like no man you know i love i think men are amazing and men have their strengths mm-hmm. and the power of men the men themselves don't know what their real power is their real power is protecting but unfortunately protecting has become interpreted as dominating in many societies. Mm-hmm. In actual fact, men as protectors, it is a beautiful pair partnership for women. Cuma dia bila dia jadi dominating tu yang jadi macam ah, semua dah imbalance. Baik, right? kalau kita, men protect and women nurture, dia jadi connected. Yeah, you know. So, this is as a society kita kena emphasize in the school systems and what not. You know, to boys, young boys. Apa ni like low boy? Kau jangan, jangan, jangan nangis kau ni kenapa? Yeah, then how, how is a man going to go through his life suffering or grief and, and, and believe that he has to be dominating? I'm not crying, I'm fine. Man, so to get this the same, yeah. you need to change a lot of things, man. Hmm. Okay, and the next question. What is your advice to the youth out there, the millennials, the Gen Z? Oh man, I think the Gen Z are cool. I mean, they're they have more props than we had when we were like their age. Like, oh my god, if I had TikTok back in the 90s, habis lah. Actually, I'm quite happy there were no cameras and TikToks back then. <laughs> we were we were we had a bit more freedom um to be a little bit more naughty in our youth and make mistakes, can without anyone judging us. But um, my advice would be, I mean, advice as a public figure uh, would be to know what the persona is that you're you're putting out there. Because sometimes the persona swallows you. Ah, it will swallow you up because we all grow. So who we are this year, in two years, we might change, become a mother, become a father or get married. So if you build a persona around a certain way of being and you need to change, If the persona is too strong, then you lose that entire crowd. Then you have to rebuild again. But if you build a persona publicly that's more flexible, lagi senang. So that probably be the only advice I'd give. So like just just know that the persona that you're building as a brand, uh, try to make it flexible so it's accessible to all, not just one type. Because if you change in your life, to my new to not adjust. So if I'm all about being like a single lady, oh my god. And you know it's all about like women empowerment, and I don't need a man. And then Titi, I fall in love. Alamak, to my nani. So then my persona has engulfed me, and all my followers are following me because of that. But I've grown and I've changed. And then to my nani, ah, they can ubah. 
So just make sure that the persona that you, you're, you're portraying is closer to reality. That's what I would say. Okay. And the last question, the final question for today is, can you tell us more about Harapan Song and the hashtag Stand for Hope campaign and the video shoot? Okay, cool. So hashtag Stand for Hope, Harapan, the video is on AWAS YouTube and you can get it and stream the song on all the digital platforms. So Spotify, iTunes, everything. It's there. And um, we're going to have a concert, 10th of October in the evening. It's Voices of Hope. And there's so many celebrities that are going to be on board. Um, some of them are celebrities that I've mentioned already. Uh, Jacqueline Victor, Adi Bahno, uh, Atilia Harun. Wow. So watch wow. out for that. More information is on AWAS. And follow me and Damien for more info. Okay, so kalau boleh, boleh tak nyanyi sikit from the song? This is... Okay, uh, where is it? Um, Wala luka, wala kumperi terasa Bersama-sama kita terus melangkah So that's my little... So please go and listen to the song. Because it's true. Wala luka, wala kumperi terasa Bersama-sama kita terus melangkah. So that is, that's where we're at now. The whole world is in the same position. Very beautiful lyrics. Okay, thank you so much, Chik Puan Sarima, for being with me on thank Women you. in Power Series video podcast. So I hope for those of you out there who are watching this, I hope you are inspired and also motivated by the sharing by Chik Puan Sarima Ibrahim. And if you want to look for the video on the song, so they can look up on uh, YouTube under Awas, yeah? And check out the yes. uh, video. That's right. Thanks very much for sharing and for opening opening up as well, Marisha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chip One. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye.